Hi people, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about exponential analysis. <sighs> what is that? Now, consider a metric, maybe let's say COVID cases. And if you think about COVID cases, it actually grows exponentially. I mean, you can easily see that through a line chart, as you can see that the line is going to, going to go up, you know, exponential curve. But it would be nice to see that how many days did it take for COVID to reach, let's say, a thousand cases then from 1000 to the next multiple maybe 10x which is 10,000 cases how many days did it take for COVID to reach 10,000 cases and then maybe a hundred multiple so how many co how many days did it take for COVID to reach a hundred thousand cases right that's what exactly what we're going to do in Power BI today sounds fun let's go all right you can see on my screen that this is the COVID dashboard that I drew in the month of April 2020 um, back in the day when COVID was all time high and this dashboard is there on my blog. I have drawn a lot of cool stuff around in this dashboard. You can definitely take a look and maybe even download this dashboard. But for just a moment, I would like to take your attention away and focus on the exponential analysis that I have built in this particular dashboard. Take a look right at the bottom. I have a small table right here in this table. I'm showing that how fast are the cases growing in the number of days and how fast is the exponent being multiplied? Take a look. From zero to 1000 cases, we reached in about 58 days. Then if we take that 1000, multiply that with five, so 5000 cases we reached in about 10 days. And we reached to about 100 million cases from the last stage in about 140 days. Now this dashboard is not really refresh of the recent data, but exactly this is what we're going to learn today, that if you have a metric, let's say COVID case or exponential growth for any factor in your business, how can you actually apply exponential analysis and find out that what is the exponent, the next exponent, maybe 10x or 20x or 100x that you're achieving in how many number of days? Let's do this. All right, time for a crude demo. Now, I have built everything in this file. I'm just going to show you, uh, but let's just take a look at the demo first, and then we'll actually take a look at all the threads that are tying this together. Please take a look. Here, I have the date on the horizontal axis, and I have a date slicer up on the top as well. I can select the range, and right now, I am just taking a look at a very short period of date, which is just about, I don't know, maybe two months of date or so. Uh, from 1st of January up until 11th of February. That's what we are taking a look at. In fact, I'm taking a look at from the 30th of January to the 11th of Feb, so just about 11 days of, of, of the time frame. Now, if I expand the period, uh, obviously this is going to grow, and I can see that in 30 days and counting, we have still not reached 1,000 cases. Now, if I just extend that a little beyond, I'm going to extend to 1,000 cases, and I can now see that 1,000 cases were reached in about 47 days, and um, 5,000 cases haven't reached as of yet, and it's just one day that we have just crossed the 5,000 cases mark. Let's just extend this beyond, and I'm going to see that I have actually you know, crossed the 5,000 cases in nine days. In the next 10 days, I crossed 25,000 cases. In the next 10 days, I crossed 100,000 cases, and we are currently on this segment of the benchmark of the table, uh, which is where we are leading to 500,000 cases. And it's just been one day that we have entered in this segment of, of the analysis. And this also actually shows you the date range here. That means from what date to what date it calculated that time frame. that actually tells you that this is the distribution of 47 days between that particular duration. Now, to be able to build this, I need to explain you all the moving parts first and then we'll actually put all of that together and we will be able to create this simple visual and you can present it in any fashion that you would want. Let's take a tour of the data model first. Here I have a very simple COVID data and that is linked with my calendar table, nothing that complicated. We also have a disconnected table, but we'll talk about that table in just a while. First, take a look at what is the COVID data that we have. So if I just jump over to my model right here, take a look at the COVID data. Like you would expect, I have the name of the state or the name of the city or the location and I have the date and how many cases were detected on that particular date right now if I were to draw a simple matrix visual from this I have a blank matrix here right here and this is how I would I'm going to draw it so I'm going to take the date from the calendar table push that right here and against the date I'm just going to take the total cases if you take a look at the total cases it's nothing but the sum of the COVID cases that we had it as a column nothing that complicated and now this actually tells you that how the COVID cases are doing now 
this is not really the kind of metric that we would want because if you were to draw a line chart with this particular metric the line chart that you're going to get is going to be something like this on some days the cases are going to be small some days the cases are going to be high and small and high and things like that but what we are trying to do is we're trying to do a running total which is where we keep on adding the number of cases that we have received in the past so our exponential line is going to probably look something like this right to be able to draw this particular line what we need is a running total not really the cases per day so i have created a very very simple metric which is nothing but the running total take a look at that so this running total all this particular calculation is doing is that it actually picks up the seventh or the eighth or whatever date that you're currently working on in the filter context and it takes a look at all the dates which are smaller to that particular date and adds all the cases and writes it right here when it goes to the next date, which is let's say the 11th, it takes a look at all the previous dates, adds all the cases and writes it right here. That's what it does, right? Take a look at the measure. It's very, very simple, not that complicated. Now, once I drag this particular running total measure to my pivot table, here is what happens. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna drag that and I actually see the running totals. Take a look, we just had first like one case on day one and then we had two, the running total is two and then two plus two is four and then four plus three is seven, and then seven plus three is 10, so on and so forth. So this is nothing but the running total that we have been able to get. Now with this running total, if I were to draw a line chart, I am going to get that exponential curve that I'm trying to seek. Pretty good. We'll start to build a disconnected table. And I'll just tell you a moment that why are we actually building a disconnected table. Now I have created this small disconnected table, which is a range table. In this particular range table, if you take a look, all that I have done is I have built out ranges and these ranges are nothing but exponents. So we start with zero cases, we go up to a thousand cases and then we start with 1000 cases, apply a five times exponent, we go to 5000 cases. And this actually grows up to about 100 million cases. So you can see that, in fact, a billion cases right here. So you can see that uh, this is the duration, which is nothing but the tag, the lower benchmark and the upper benchmark. It's a simple table that I have created right here. What are we going to do with this table? Please take a look. Now this happens to be a disconnected table because I'm not really going to link this table anywhere in my data model. I'm just going to use, uh, use this table to carry out calculations. If I just go back to my visual, I create another uh, table visual. In that table visual, I am going to, uh, in fact, drop my duration right here. And let's just also drop in the lower and the upper. So the entire table that you saw in back in the data is what I have created through a matrix visual. Now, here is what I am trying to achieve. If I have to find out that how many days did it take for the number of COVID cases to reach to a particular benchmark. Take a look. Imagine that I'm doing the calculation for the first um, interval here, which is zero to 1000 cases. The lower is zero, the upper is 1000. What this essentially should do is that it should take a look at the lower and the upper and then find out that the running total hits the upper benchmark on what date. So it starts from here, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. It keeps on counting until and unless it actually hits 1000 right here, which is close about right here. And then it's actually going to pick up all of these values and all of these uh, dates right here. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna find out the largest date subtract the largest date and the smallest date, which is which could be up somewhere here and find out that how many days did it take to reach to 1000 cases. And that's the number that we would want to write here. When it moves to the next bucket, which is this particular bucket, one to 5000 cases, it again then captures two numbers, 1001 and 5000. And then it starts to do the calculation from 1001, which is right from here, here and onwards. And then it actually sees, hey, when do you reach 5000 cases? You reach 5000 cases right here. It then picks up this data and this particular data. And once it picks up the data, it actually takes a difference of 26th of March and 17th of uh, March right here. Find out how many days are there in between and writes that number right here. That's how I would like to do this calculation, right? Now, to be able to do this calculation, what I have done is I've created a simple measure. It might just look long, but it's actually very simple. Please take a look. In this particular measure, which is nothing but distribution, all that I'm trying to do, first of all, it might just look long. Don't get intimidated. Please take a look. The first thing that I'm doing is capturing two numbers. What is the smallest number in the range and what is the largest number in the range? Take a look, the min number and the max number right here. This is the max number, this is the min number. And these two numbers, 
are nothing but this particular number and this particular number depending upon where are you working in the filter context right now once i capture the two numbers um, the numbers which are right there which is the lower and the upper then i need to take these numbers and i need to start to compare these numbers against all my dates and when do i actually reach that particular number to be able to do that i have actually created a simple filter table right here which is next this is the next most important part of the calculation i'm saying that hey why don't you do these two checks which is the min and the max in the calendar table which is where i'm doing my running total and check where does this particular value which is the running total falls between the minimum and the maximum date so this is the simple check that i have made now what this is actually going to produce you is the list of dates that means when does it actually become 1000 from the lower benchmark of zero this is going to give you the dates and this date is this particular table is going to have the largest date somewhere right here at the bottom and it's going to have the smallest date somewhere here up on the top and all that i would want to do now is take the difference between the largest date and the smallest date the next two calculations are nothing but to capture the smallest date in the table that we have created which is right here and to find out the largest date to capture the largest date somewhere right here off the filter table now once i'm able to capture the smallest date and the largest date i then just take a difference between the max date and the min date and add just one to that rest all of the work that you see which is spilling around here is just to make the calculation look fancy add the label and all of that kind of fancy stuff that's going on right here now if you drag this calculation to the pivot table that is right here what we're going to see is nothing but the distribution that how many days did it take to reach to a thousand cases and then nine days to five thousand cases and ten days to whatever number of cases if i were to draw a slicer um, of the time period right here and if i were to now squeeze in the period i'm actually going to see that the duration of those particular number of days where the time slicer is actually running so if i just cancel over the lower and the upper this is just going to give me the, uh, the numbers just fine so if i just take that off i'm now just seeing my distribution calculation which is how many days did it take between that time period to reflect your data and the distribution of days one another interesting thing that you can do in this particular calculation is also take a look at by state i have a state as well so if i were to make another slicer on the state if i just made another slicer on the state and if i were to select any particular state let's say assam or bihar or chandigarh or any other let's say state maybe kerala i'm going to take a look at that how fast is the covid actually spreading in that particular state in terms of exponential analysis before you go one last thing now if i have been able to do this analysis which is where i have the distribution and i can take a look at it that it took 14 days now once i have that range of the date which is where it's nothing but 14 days whatever that range is and if i have got the largest date and the smallest date and taking the difference of the dates is actually giving me that number 14 now if i have that dates i might as well be able to find out that when did it start and when did it end this is nothing but simple concatenation so the measure actually remains largely the same very very similar measure but at the end what i do is i end up concatenating the date rather than actually taking the difference between the largest and the smallest state so here all that i have done is i have taken the smallest state and then two the largest state and i actually get a time frame that when are we starting and when are we ending in that time frame now if i actually drag this particular calculation the same very calculation to my, to my pivot table i actually get to see that these 57 days are from what time period to actually what time period awesome isn't it all right, that was a small nugget on doing exponential analysis in Power BI. Let me know what you think about it. Have you done such kind of analysis? I got very, very fascinated. Once I saw this particular analysis somewhere published on the web, it was showing that how fast is the COVID growing in terms of exponents that it is achieving in number of days. And then I tried to replicate that calculation in Power BI. Let me know if you have any questions around this and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you're starting out with Power BI and learning DAX and Power Query is hard, you'd like to learn the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more challenging problems uh, within your data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. And that's all about it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.